whether you are here with us live today or you're watching in the app, thanks so much for being here. My name is Michael Schwartz. I'm the experiential director of Better Spaces. We partner with buildings and companies to create programs that help you connect, create, and perform at your highest potential. Today in the Build a Resilient Body series, we're focusing on shoulders. Once again, we have Dr. Paul Kachoa. He received his doctorate of physical therapy from Mercy College and a BS in exercise physiology from Rutgers. His treatment philosophy is move better, feel better, and play better. If you have any questions, feel free to, at the end of today's session, unmute yourself, or you can type in the chat window, uh, and I'll moderate some questions at the end. All right, Dr. Paul, take it away. Hi, thanks, Mike. My name is Dr. Paul Kachoa, and uh, I'm a physical therapist. I'm owner of Par 5 Physical Therapy in Randolph, New Jersey. Um, today, we're going to go over the shoulder. Now, the shoulder, if you've been following along with my series here, is probably one of the most mobile and most flexible joints in the body. So there's a lot of things to cover. Um, let's get into it. I'm gonna pull up my slide here, transition into this. So the Resilient Body Series is we go joint by joint, going over um, all the different parts of the body, all the different joints of the body to make sure that you understand what you need to do to perform self-maintenance to you know, be able to, like we said, move better, feel better, and play better. So if you've been into uh, my classes before, you know, this is for you if you're having shoulder pain, you know, if you sit the majority of the day, or if you don't have any shoulder issues and you wanna keep it that way, you know, this class is gonna be um, filled with information that you could start using today. Now, this is an important note, because I'm a physical therapist, uh, I have to do this disclaimer that um, the stuff that we're going to talk about today is um, important general information, but nothing that should substitute any specific medical diagnosis or medical treatment. So it's not physical therapy. This is just um, general information. All right. So the body functions on this stability, this pattern of alternating pattern of stability and mobility. If this pattern is disrupted, pain or injury that result. So you've probably heard this before if you've been to my previous sessions. This is the, uh, the, uh, the video that I show illustrating the, um, the pattern that we talked about. Now, for today, we're interested most in the shoulder. The shoulder is classified as a mobile segment, okay? And we look at the joints that are close to that. We look at the shoulder blade, the scapula. That should be stable. And the mid-back, the thoracic spine, that should be mobile. And then we go down to the wrist and that should be stable. It's pretty much just, you know, bending and straightening joint. But the shoulder blade really relies, uh, the shoulder really relies on the shoulder blade itself. Because it's a ball and socket joint, you know, if you think about like the socket being like this and the ball going in like so, depending upon where the socket is pointing, where that shoulder blade is pointing, is gonna dictate whether or not you're gonna have pain or symptoms in the joint. As I move my arm overhead, if the socket is facing a different way, if it's facing too much downward, and if I try and go overhead, I'm gonna butt up against the top part of that socket, and that generally will cause pain as it um, hits or pinches the rotator cuff tendons in there. So we have that, that's what we call an impingement syndrome. So as we go through this, the stretches and the mobility stuff, we wanna hold stretches that are designed to lengthen tissue at least 30 seconds, and then breathing through it, trying to relax into it. And if we're doing a joint mobilization, we're gonna try and do that for two minutes. Alrighty, so don't push through pain, make sure everything's super comfortable. So some three tests that we're gonna be doing first is the latissimus length test, the reach roll and lift test, and the yokum test. So the latissimus muscle is this long muscle that comes from your lower back, wraps around the armpit and inserts into the front part of your shoulder right here. It basically pulls the arm down and internally rotates it and pulls. And anything that you do pulling, it usually will involve the latissimus muscle. But this also, if it's short and tight, limits your ability to go overhead. So the test looks like this. And then we're gonna go into that 
uh, really quick right here. I'm just gonna go into my other camera shot. What we need to do is we need to find a wall. So I'm just gonna turn this. Here's my wall right here. You're gonna follow me in this camera. You're gonna stand up, get up against the wall. Oh, my, my head's in the way. My other camera shot's in the way. There we go. So we're gonna be up against the wall. Your knees are gonna be bent. Your hips, shoulders, and head are gonna be against the wall. So this is the starting position for this test. A lot of times what I've seen that with people who have a rounded posture and their mid back cannot extend, they wind up trying to get their head into the wall by looking up. So you wanna watch out for that. We will do something to try and treat or um, improve your thoracic mobility later on in the class today. But if you can, you try and get as tall as you can, get your, your head flat against the wall and you're facing forward. From this position, we're gonna engage the abdominal. So you're pushing your back flat against the wall. So there shouldn't be any space between your, your lower back and, and the wall. Then we're gonna take one hand, thumb up, and then we're gonna raise that all the way up and straight and see if we can get to the wall without bending the elbow. I see a lot of people that come up overhead because of the tightness in that lat. They'll try and get their hand to the wall and then they'll bend the elbow or the arm will come out to the side. It needs to go by the ear with the back flat and that's gonna be full range of motion for your latissimus muscle. All right. So let's go back to our slides. And the next test is gonna be called this reach, roll and lift test. It's basically getting down into a sort of like a child's pose position, putting, well, this is the easy way to do it, putting your, your forehead on your fist and then reaching and rolling and lifting. So what this test does, it tests your ability to upwardly rotate your shoulder blade and depress it. So it's taking your shoulder blade See if you can rotate it up and pull it back and down on your, on your uh, mid back, on your thoracic spine, so that that socket can roll all the way up and face upwards so you can get full overhead range of motion. So we're gonna go back into our two shot here. Let's see if I can click this down a bit. There we are. So I'm gonna get onto the floor into this child's pose position. So I'm gonna be rounded my lower back is rounded. I'm going to take one fist, put it on the, my, uh, under the ground, put my forehead right on top of that. I'm going to take the other hand. I'm going to reach forward, walking forward with my hand, turn it over. So the palm is facing up. This is a lot of the times where I feel people are limited and then try and re reach up or, or roll and lift that to the ceiling. So it's a reach, roll, and lift test. So reaching, rolling, and lifting off the ground. Okay. So that's that test and that test for shoulder blade strength and mobility. Let's go back to this one. And then the final one is pretty simple. It's called the Yoakum test. It's the classic test to test for shoulder impingement. All you do is just take one hand, put your fingertips on your other shoulder, and then without moving your head, bring your elbow to your face. If this results in pain, then that means that the uh, shoulder blade is pinching. Uh, the shoulder blade and the shoulder, the, the, the joint itself is pinching and you've got like some impingement issues, pinching with the shoulder, uh, the rotator cuff muscles in there. All right. So some common stretches that we're going to go through to see if we can improve some of this mobility. We're going to address the lat. We're going to address the mid back. Let's pull this one up first. Let's see. Yeah. So this video is going to play. This is the latissimus stretch. And it's basically taking a stick horizontal surface and getting your elbows in as tight as you can, as close as you can, and your hands are separated as far as you can, and then bending your body down, okay? So I've got my PVC pipe right here. When this video stops, we're gonna go, well, actually, let's just pop into this position. Let's see, there we go. So I'm gonna roll this over and see if I can use my chair so I've got the, my chair right here, I'm gonna pull this out. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and situate my hands so that my hands are apart, but my elbows are close on this surface right here. So I can kind of get like this, let me angle it this way so you can see. So I've got, I situate my elbows nice and close. So you can see how close they are. And then I'm gonna get my hands apart. 
And then from here, I'm going to rotate that stick, that PVC pipe, so it's parallel to the plane of my body, keeping my elbows in tight. And you can see how my forearms kind of make like a V shape. And then I take my head and shoulders and I kind of look down, bringing my hips down. So relatively, what I'm doing here is using the, uh, the couch or the chair here to raise my elbows while maintaining this externally rotated shoulder position. So I'm not letting my elbow, my forearms come in. So I'm not narrow like this, I'm apart and I'm coming up. And that you should feel as a big stretch into the uh, latissimus muscle into the back of your shoulder. All right. So the other thing that uh, we're gonna go over here is how, you know, I think we mentioned this before that the shoulder blade is supposed to rotate upward and that reach, roll, and lift test really um, test that muscle out, the uh, lower trap and the serratus muscle to rotate that shoulder blade upward, okay? So this reduces the shoulder cuff, rotator cuff impingement and improves your ability to do things overhead, like reach into a cupboard or lift the, lift the weight over your head. One of the exercises or one of the muscles that we talked about is serratus anterior. That comes from your ribs and inserts into the lower part of your shoulder blade. What that does is it pulls the bottom part of your shoulder blade forward and rotates the shoulder blade socket up. Okay, so these are a couple exercises that, that you can do to uh, activate that serratus anterior. One is just basically this right here. This is like a, a quadruped on your hands and knees, just trying to push your shoulder blades forward. Now we're gonna go back to this other picture here. I'm gonna come down, kick this out of the way, onto my hands and knees. And the big thing here is using my shoulder blades to separate. So we get on the hands, hands are below my shoulders, my knees are below my, my hips, and I'm just gonna push away the floor or push my body as far as I can upward, separating my shoulder blades and then relaxing down. So it's really about how far I can push away not how far down I can go and also not bending the elbows, okay? So the motion is basically taking this shoulder blade forward and then re re relaxing it backwards. So forward and then backward, trying to punch that shoulder blade forward as far as I can. So that's the serratus anterior. Another exercise that I have people do is anything that strengthens the lower trapezius muscle. The trapezius muscle is so big, it comes from the top of the, of the bottom of your neck, out to your shoulder, and then down into the middle part of your back. It's so big, it has three parts. It has the upper trap, the lower trap, and the middle trap. A lot of times with sitting, posture, stress, we'll get a little bit active in this upper trap position. Upper trap gets active, and then the, um, the lower and the middle can't function as well. Let's see if this thing, oh, it's just a picture. So anyway, the shoulder blade, the lower trap kind of rotates that down and back. And what this picture is doing, it's not, it's not playing, the video isn't playing. So what this does is that I have a band that's attached to the rig in front of me. So we're just gonna kind of look at it this way. So if this band was attached see if we can get that angle attached in front and I raise my arm overhead. That's what I'm going to activate when I do my, 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 my lower trap. So this is attached in front. Actually, let's see if we can do that right there without moving my door. Oh boy, I'm stretching out. Now the door is opening. This is attached to a door handle and the door is opening and it's getting crazy noisy in here. But anyway, what I'm doing is I'm attaching out in front and I'm raising my arm over your head, my head, basically like that. How is this live TV guy? <laughs> so anyway, raising the arm up and back with some type of resistance going forward is a way to activate that, uh, that lower trap. Another way to do it is to get into that same position, that quadruped position and taking that hand and raising it at a 45 degree angle here. So now I'm just working against gravity. The same shape that I had in this position, in that standing position, when I was pulling backwards, I'm doing in this shape. 
Okay, so it's the same movement pattern. I'm pulling my shoulder blade back and down against the, the resistance of gravity. Okay, so that's the purpose of that muscle, to rotate that shoulder blade back and down. The other one, let's see if this works. It does. This is gonna be how to mobilize your mid-back. So we talked about your mid-back not being rounded out. We're gonna use a foam roller to get into that muscle or get into that body part to extend the spine. Okay, so the mid back again needs to extend and rotate and you know prolong postures and sitting that can create a very rounded back. So let's kind of get into this picture here. So I've got my foam roller on the ground. The key thing with this is to put this on the lower ribs, not on your lower back, and my knees and hips are gonna be bent. From here, I'm gonna put my hands behind my head and bring my elbows forward. Elbows back, everything's gonna be slack on the back here. We want to make that tissue tight, create tension through that tissue, so I'm gonna bring my elbows forward. From here, keeping that back soft tissue tight by bringing my elbows forward, I'm gonna lean back against this. So as I go back, I'm keeping my abdominals on, so that I don't hyperextend or arch my back. I'm gonna do that a couple of times at that level. I'm gonna scoot down and then do it again at the next level up. And I repeat that through each level of my spine here to try and get my mid back to extend. And this is a really great anti-sitting stretch to extend my, my mid back. So again, as I go here, my elbows are not like this. If I go out like this, I'm just gonna move into the soft tissue and the soft tissue is gonna absorb this motion and my shoulder blades are gonna block that motion versus when my elbows are here or here, my shoulder blades are separated, they're out of the way and the tissue in the upper back is on tension. And then as I go back, I'm more effective at mobilizing the joint and the bones underneath the soft tissue versus kind of going back like this. And this is much different than just kind of going up and down like this, rolling the mid back. This is completely different. Okay, so hopefully we've got a little bit out of breath doing all that, all that stretching. Hopefully we got some information, some valuable information from all that.